Hello again. There's a bizarre campaign currently underway to award the sporting icon Muhammad Ali an honorary knighthood. He's been officially nominated and the papers are already on the desk of number 10, a small army of toadying grovellers from the establishment as varied as Boris Johnson, Sir Bob Geldof and this Kendall MP, plus a host of sporting personalities such as Mo Farah, Denise Lewis, David Haig and Nigel Benn are adding their voices to this chorus. But it ain't no honour. It's a great insult to the man who inspired millions, who made a courageous stand by refusing to fight in the Vietnam War, and this resulted in him being stripped of his world heavyweight title. In 1970, he staged a remarkable comeback to regain the championship. Obviously, this man isn't perfect. Who is? For example, joining the Nation of Islam cult. But this didn't dent his popularity to any great degree amongst the millions of the world's downtrodden. As he's been suffering for decades from the ravages of Parkinson's disease, public appearances have become increasingly rare. I don't know who's handling his affairs, but no way should he be conned into accepting the insult of a knighthood. Born Cassius Marcellus Clay, he rejected his slave name to become Muhammad Ali as he is recognised throughout the world today. Remember, our British ruling class became powerful, wealthy, on a grand scale through the institution of slavery. This trade provided finances to kickstart the Industrial Revolution, modern capitalism, the British Empire and the consequent plunder and underdevelopment of Africa. The continent is still reeling from the after effects of this holocaust. The British system still operates under the rule of the direct descendants of these slave merchants and slaveholders. Part of the booty presented to Queen Elizabeth I by her privateers were four African slaves. History doesn't recall the fate of these unfortunates, but they were followed by countless millions into servitude and death over the centuries. This oppression, now mutated into racism, has continued down to Queen Elizabeth II, the present monarch, married incidentally to an out-and-out -out racist. Our ruling class, its system, has remained more or less unbroken. In one country alone, Kenya, during the early years of our beloved Queen's reign, tens of thousands of Africans were massacred and tortured by the colonial authorities. So... Why should Muhammad Ali accept an honour from such a tainted source? Benjamin Zephaniah, for example, refused point blank one of these ridiculous awards. Is this happening now to coincide with the I Am The Greatest exhibition at the O2 in London? Or is it a slimy, insidious ploy to somehow get the black population forever under heavy manners from all arms of the British state to somehow identify with the system that represses them, to join in with the celebrations of the Queen's 90th birthday this June. The British state and its institutions are racist to the, to the rotten core. One reason they must be overthrown. I would like to see a counter campaign by black activists to, to urge Muhammad Ali to reject this cruel and patronising insult. Obviously, as anarchists, we totally reject the monarchy and the honour system and the entire establishment. And we're certainly not alone in these sentiments. So hopefully, the black activists, as they fight against the racist system here in the so-called United Kingdom that oppresses us all, will rise to the occasion and advise Muhammad Ali to make one last great gesture and reject this insulting medieval title. Oh yeah, at the end of my last vidcast, I forgot to mention, silly me, the meet-up time at Tower Hill. It's 2pm, so I hope to see some of you there. Bye.